the threat from outside forces is far less sinister, dangerous, and grave than the threat from within. We will root out the communists, Marxists, fascists, and the radical left thugs that live like vermin within the confines of our country, that lie and steal and cheat on elections. Donald Trump vowing to, quote, root out the political left. That was a speech he gave on Veterans Day. As Trump is seeking a second term. He continues to repeat false claims about election fraud. And our next guest has a whole new book telling about the origin story of Trump trying to tear down the guardrails of American democracy and the right-wing media's mission to put him back in office in 2024. We are so happy to be joined by our friend and former CNN anchor, Brian Selter, who's the author of Network of Lies, the epic saga of Fox News, Donald Trump, and the battle for American democracy. So good to have you, friend. Good morning. It's so great to be here. Congratulations. Thank you. Early in the book, let me read, this is page eight, right before you get into part one. Quote, hopefully you'll come away feeling the way that I do, empowered and equipped to tell the truth more loudly than ever. You're still hopeful. Absolutely, because I think most people just want to know what's real and true in the world. And that, that's why the, the so-called network of lies, this disinformation machine that includes parts of Fox News, but also, you know, the Steve Bannons of the world, right-wing podcasts, all that, that machinery that's trying to re-elect Donald Trump. Uh, it is important. It's got to be reckoned with. It's got to be scrutinized. It deserves all that scrutiny. But most people actually still want to know what is real and true in the world. You know, we have to be louder than the liars in this environment. And the liars come in lots of different directions. You know, just the other day, I was almost fooled by some AI deep fake from the Trump campaign, trying to trick people into thinking NBC was saying something that wasn't. A lot of that noise is out there. And of course, we in the media, we get to help break through that noise. To counter your glass half full. Oh, no. Don't do it, Phil. No, 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 no. But I think what's so disconcerting to some degree is we saw this in some of the text messages that came out during the Dominion lawsuit. Yeah. You dig in on this uh, in such a fulsome way is the perverse incentives right. that create, you know, Fox's internal conundrum of our viewers want this, even though it's not true, we have to give it to them because of stock prices, because right. of ratings, because of all of those things. What changes that? Right, what changes that is, I think, a one-by-one, day-by-day, person-to-person conversation. The awkward conversations that some of us are going to have at Thanksgiving next week, the, the film members might dread seeing, they're the ones that we have to talk with, the ones that listen to and learn from. And I think there are examples of that happening. I write about that toward the end of the book because I wanted to write an optimistic story, even though this is rooted in the lies of the 2020 election. I had to write it because there were so many emails and texts that came out, and they were so revealing about how it worked inside Fox, but also how it's working to this day. You know, all of these these uh, big lies about the 2020 election, they're the predicate for Trump's re-election campaign. And I'm glad you just played that clip of him yeah. describing his opponents as vermin. That's a horrifying clip. That's a fascist clip. You know, oftentimes fascism is perceived as an expansionist, warlike you know, idea from the 1930s or Hitler's Germany. But Trump is this kind of isolationist fasc fascist in terms of his rhetoric over the weekend. He goes to give a Veterans Day speech and then talks about rooting out vermin from the left. That is shocking, and it's not the kind of thing we can really to. One of the things you discuss in here um, is the weaponization of language. And you yes. use the example of Brett Baer saying on air, and by the way, I, I think a, a really strong journalist and important for Fox in many respects. I think people wouldn't have expected some of this stuff from, from him. He said, we're not going to stop digging and following up on leads. And you write, quote, the language of journalism was being exploited to cover far-fetched theories in the cloak of legitimacy. It points to a bigger issue of the lack of media literacy that gets more and more uh, dangerous with AI, as yes. you just pointed out. Yes, 100%. There's lots of stuff out there that's not news, but smells like news or tends to be news. And, and that's what was happening with the big lie in 2020. And again, it can do to this day, this idea of an alternative reality, what they may find as the mirror world, uh, where you can believe whatever you want to believe. But I, I still, I came away from this believing there is still an uh, ability to, to make change. Uh, and some people can still be shamed into doing the right thing. Uh, you know, there are many Republican lawmakers, elected officials, who are still in a reality based environment who do want to do what's best. Uh, of course, what they're up against is that kind of extremist rhetoric. What goes through your head when you see photos or tweets from the UFC fight over the weekend? And Trump standing yeah, with Tucker Carlson after Carlson, saying he yeah. vice president. So interesting. I, I think clearly Trump is trying to dangle the idea of an alliance with Tucker Carlson. You know, Tucker Carlson's the kind of figure, even though he's been diminished since being fired by Fox, he's not reaching nearly as many people as he used to. He's trying really hard, though, to create a new media brand on those site forming on his Twitter. He wants to be seen as a Trump ally, uh, even though, of course, he famously said in the messages yeah. that he hated Trump passionately. 
The reality is, guys that turn across, they think they can out-Trump Trump. They think they're smarter and more effective than Trump. In some ways, that might make them more dangerous. Big picture, you write about the lack of civility. And as we look forward and what's to come, also the end of an era at Fox. Right, Rupert Murdoch, I think it's this, this week. week. Rupert Murdoch semi-retiring, right. yes. Yeah, what happens to civility? I look at groups like Better Angels and More in Common that are designed to start to foster conversations and dialogue. And I think you're never going to reach everybody. You're never going to break through to everybody. But uh, when presented with what is real in the world, most people still do gravitate toward that. And by the way, every so often, even in an environment full of this noise and misinformation that we all cover every day, there still are elections. We still get to vote. Uh, and there are so many people from so many parties, so many stripes, still working hard to defend that. Uh, that's why I mentioned American democracy in the title. This is a battle for American democracy. And Trump, for what it's worth, for better or worse, he's making a very clear, he's creating a very clear delineation for 2024. He's presenting a very clear choice for the country. When you uh, say semi-retire and... Semi-retire, yes. Yeah. What do you mean? What's the dynamic right now? In the, for people who only see it or have only seen succession, yeah. <laughs> what's the dynamic right now? 92-year-old Rupert Murdoch, he's never truly going to retire, but he is stepping away from his boards. He's handing over all the power to his son, Lachlan. Someday there will be a battle for control because the more liberal son, James, would like to take over Fox News and drag it more to the middle. And that doesn't happen until Rupert Murdoch dies. As one source said to me for the book, Rupert Murdoch's death will change the Republican politics even more than Trump's descent down the escalator. The idea that Fox could be up for it for grabs in the future, it gets lots of people talking in political circles, but it's all just a guessing game because Rupert Murdoch is apparently in fine health. Brian Seltzer, so many congratulations. Thank you, sir. This second great folks. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Book Network of Lies. Pick it up. Available tomorrow. Be sure to grab a copy.